Spirit of God, come down. Spirit of God, rain down. Spirit of God, come into my life. Spirit of God, rain down. Let your fire fall on me, oh Spirit of God. Fall, fall on me, Spirit, fall on me. Oh, let your fire fall on me, oh Spirit of God. Fall, fall on me, Spirit, fall on me. I pray you rain down, down, rain down in my life, Lord. Rain down, down, rain. I pray you rain down, down, rain. Rain down, down, rain, O oh Spirit of God. Hello, friends. Nice to meet you all again. Okay, let us continue with what we were speaking about yesterday. Yesterday we were speaking about the third and fourth stages of God-human relationship. And we already explained the first, second and third stages the stages of gifts, stage of sin, stage of punishment. And the fourth stage is the stage of repentance or conversion. Yesterday we explained about the child that is punished for its ingratitude. And once the child received a punishment, it was almost like a shock for the child. It comes to realize that it has lost the affection of the mother and therefore wants to regain the lost affection. Here there is a transformation that takes place. It is taking place within the mind of the child. Remember, when the gift was initially given to the child, the child was after the gift. It concentrated on the gift alone. And when the child concentrated on the gift, forgetting the mother or the giver. It became the first stage of sin, forgetting or forsaking the giver. When the giver is forsaken or forgotten, naturally the concentration will be on the gift alone. And when somebody concentrates on the gifts alone, the merits and demerits of the gift will be quite impressive in the mind of the receiver. And in this process, sin grows. When the receiver finds something not so agreeable to it with regard to the gift. He or she may become discontent and thus develop an attitude of despisal towards the giver. 
and thus growing in the process of sin. Okay. And here we see in this fourth stage a real conversion or change of heart occurs for the child. And what is it? Till now, the child was thinking of the gift alone, its demerits, drawbacks and has totally forgotten the giver. But now, what does the child think of? It has got only one concern now in its mind, to regain the lost affection of the mother. Or in other words, we can say, to regain the giver himself or herself. Therefore, the conversion is this. Concentration changes once again. Up to the moment of giving the gift, child was always looking at the face of the giver. Concentration only on the giver. When the gift is given, concentration changes. It is transferred to the gift. But now, the gift is no more in the realm or in the frame. And the child now wants only the mother, the giver. And this transformation that is occurred in the mind and heart of the child is the real conversion. That is, forsaking the gift, the child begins to concentrate on the giver or the mother. And this is a real conversion of the heart. And this process we can call a process of conversion or repentance. I hope the process is clear. The child that is up to this moment, after the gift now, is not at all thinking of the gift or mindful of the gift, concentrates on the mother alone. And this coming back of the child was the real intent or the purpose of the punishment given. The child was punished by the mother to make the child realize the folly of what it had done. And now the child is convinced of it. Okay, therefore, this fourth stage brings out clearly what exactly is the process of this conversion. We can call it a process of repentance. And according to the historical books of the Bible, we can say there are four important elements with regard to this concept of repentance. Four elements are <coughs> one, forsaking the gift or leaving behind the gift. Second, returning to the giver. The third, accept the responsibility of the action or sin committed by the wounded or the um, despising receiver. And fourthly, accepting the punishment proclaimed by the giver or given by the giver without murmuring or without being rebellious or revolt. All these things are clear in the example of 
the child that we have already analyzed. Okay, we can say the same is seen in the history of King David. We know David was one of the most favored kings of Israel. He was called even my beloved servant David. David, my beloved one. And David is always given an attribute. One who walks after the Lord or one who walks the way of the Lord. And David was leading such a life. But when he fell into sin, one after another, he was given the great shock of punishment. We know all this story in the second book of Samuel in chapter 11 and 12. In chapter 11, we find the sins of David narrated. We can find David had committed three serious sins. Adultery with the wife of Uriah. Of course, she is named Bathsheba, we know. And the second, he committed the crime of murder. He killed Uriah or caused to kill Uriah, the husband of Bathsheba. And the third, after killing Uriah, he appropriated the wife of Uriah, Bathsheba, and made her his own wife. Okay, here we can see the three serious sins committed by David and he was not at all repentant about these sins. Before the entire world, he was able to put up a face that cheated others and this having a face which was deceitful, he was able to impress the people of his own country. And now what is going to happen? God sends his prophet Nathan and he proclaims punishment on David. In chapter 12, beginning from verses 1 to 14, we find the story of the punishment proclaimed on King David. The prophet was trying to make David convinced of his sin in different ways. He used a parable. Then there was a direct accusation saying you are the man. Then David was reminded of the great gifts and blessings God had given him. <coughs> and again we can say God after enumerating the crimes decided to punish him. Even when the crimes were enumerated one after another, David did not feel that he has done this. He was not convinced of it. But when the severe punishment was pronounced and the punishment was so frightening, we know it was so severe. There were three punishments imparted to David. 
the sword of evil will remain forever in your house. That is, the power of evil will rule over your house for eternity. Or in other words, we can say, as long as the Davidic dynasty is in power or last. And the second thing, we can say, the, the power of evil will disintegrate his own family. There will be problems that arise or that will arise in his family. And then it was pronounced, I will take away your wives and give them to others. A punishment he again imparted on his family. His wives will be violated. That is the meaning of that. Okay. And as a third punishment, it will be pronounced to him, the child that is born to you shall die. That is, the newborn child, the child born in Bathsheba will die. The threefold punishments was so greatly shaking the person of David. And after the pronouncement of the first two punishments, it was such a great shock for him. He really received the shock. And that shock opened up his eyes, his inner eyes, inner ears. And we can say it opened up his heart. And now only he realizes the seriousness of the sins that he had committed. And now he is totally shocked, thoroughly shocked. And therefore, he is confessing his sin. In verse 13, he says, I have sinned against Yahweh. He does not even ask for pardon. We can think that he did not ask for pardon because he understood that he is not worthy to ask for or to receive pardon from God. He has done such heinous crimes. Okay. Now, as it is clear from the story, David was given the shock and in that shock, he is transformed. And this is the real result of punishment. And if we analyze the shock and its impact on David and how he was totally transformed, the different elements in the process of contrition or repentance will be made clear. Okay, we have already mentioned there are four points here. The first, as we said, is forsaking the gift or leaving behind the gift. This is the first necessary condition that we should have. Okay. If I am holding a chain that I had stolen from someone and I go to confession, and I confess that, okay, I had stolen a chain of a person. Will it be a real sign of repentance? As we have studied in our religion classes and so on, 
that is not enough we are to be repentant and as a sign of repentance we should be ready to forsake the chain we have to give it back to the owner and that is an essential condition in the same way we can say as a sign of repentance we have to forsake or leave behind the gift we cannot hold on to the gift and at the same time say i am repenting of my crime both cannot or will not go together in order to be transformed i am to leave it back or leave behind for that is the first thing needed and the second thing that is needed here is the return to the giver we know in the entire old testament we can say the essence of repentance is this repent and return to yahweh it is a prophetic exhortation repent and return the same will be found in the new testament too if only i am ready to forsake the gift then i will be able to turn back or make a u turn it is quite clear that i can make a u turn only when my hands are free otherwise it will be difficult therefore repent and return and that we can say as the second element of real genuine contrition and now the third element it is the acceptance of the responsibility of the actions committed or the sins committed okay we know when we go through the story of king saul and his sins god raised against him all these accusations why did he not obey the commands commandments given by yahweh or the order of yahweh nathan asked him sorry samuel asked him a couple of times why did he not fulfill the command of yahweh but saul used to answer i fulfill the command given to me but the people they did not obey it was they who disobeyed the commands of yahweh and went against his commandments and because of this justifying attitude accepted by saul he was rejected by god he was always blaming others justifying himself and found fault with others he is totally okay before the lord that was his stand but that was not the truth we know and samuel explained it to him and <coughs> because of the special stand of samuel sorry uh, king saul he was rejected by yahweh but here in the case of david what does he do he is there repentant of his sin but he does not go forward giving any justification or any explanation he accepted totally 
the responsibility of his evil words and deeds no justification no explanation no blaming of others i have sin against yahweh he did not elaborate it it is not needed because yahweh reads the mind and heart of the individual and look at the result the moment david said i got sinned against yahweh even though he had not asked to pardon or pleaded yahweh to forgive his sin nothing we see here but even then god forgave him and we see what did nathan say here the lord has already forgiven you the moment david david confessed his sin god forgives him simultaneously therefore if one is ready to accept the responsibility of the actions committed and are really contrite about this naturally one will be accepted by the lord and that is what happens in the case of david his acceptance of his own sinful deeds made him worthy of the forgiveness granted by the lord so this is the third element here accept the responsibility of the crimes or actions committed and there is the fourth element accept the punishment proclaimed okay again we can make a comparison between king saul and king david when saul was punished by samuel according to the instruction given by god and see what was the punishment the lord has taken away the kingdom from you and that means you cannot be the king of israel anymore i have removed you from kingship but what does saul do we see in chapter 15 of first samuel he demanded samuel or he asked samuel commanded him to go with him and offer sacrifice in the sight of the people because the people of the city are gathered together they had seen that the enemy was defeated and now the king together with the prophet are to offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving to the lord and therefore he was asking samuel to come and to offer the sacrifice with him if the prophet is not turning back the people may think he is keeping away from the king and that may make misunderstanding and confusion among the people and hence Saul demanded that Samuel goes with him and offer the sacrifice and what is actually the thought behind it he is not ready to accept the punishment proclaimed on him but look at David he was so seriously severely punished but he did not ask for any lenience in the punishment on the other hand he totally accepted what was given and here we find the greatness of the repentance of david he totally accepted the punishment without murmuring or without 
blaming anyone and therefore we can say david's repentance is the real genuine contrition or repentance and this we can say is the fourth stage of god human relationship the stage of contrition or repentance and therefore we can say now we have seen four different stages of god human relationship the stage of uh, gift the stage of sin the stage of punishment and the stage of repentance and all these four stages will make clear how we are to proceed in accordance with the plan of god okay thank you and tomorrow we will continue loving god we thank you for the blessing of reading your word together we ask that these words of life truth and hope would continue to impact us in the days ahead may your love and grace follow each of us refreshed and blessed by you amen Thank <music> you.